everyone. We did a drive like an instructor video a couple of weeks back um, where I was talking about making progress and during that video I made reference to my missus's car which we're in today um, and how probably irrelevant um, some of the performance cars are nowadays um, and I'm just going to go and show people what I mean by that um, I'm going to try and do the same route as well and what we'll do is we'll try and make progress again within the speed limits and I'm going to try and just go through a couple of things what it's like to drive a so-called performance car what we've got people who watch my channel will probably know we've got uh, an M3 competition it's a 66 reg um, it's only done 16,000 miles it's uh, it's treated uh, it's treated better than any baby this thing is um, it isn't driven a lot um, but it does get driven it's driven properly which I'm going to show you today not to its full capabilities and that's the thing that really this video is going to be all about um, you can't really drive these performance cars nowadays um, to their full capabilities on the roads uh, the cars have far exceeded what the roads allowed to be honest and we're gonna have a little look at this um, just gonna change a couple of the settings uh, steering's on uh, sport and then I hate it on sport I prefer it on comfort on um, this particular model of car um, dampers were in sport now that's going to comfort as well and um, engine at the moment is on efficiency um, just gonna let the car warm up for a little we'll uh, we'll take it from there we've got some grayer clouds although I've still got my glasses on I'm pretty light sensitive to be honest that's why I constantly wear glasses if I don't I'll just be squinting all the time um, but we've got um, some grey clouds I think we may have a little bit of rain due um, over over the next 45 50 minutes so that's another thing I actually hope that it does rain because then we get to talk about what we've got to do in a car like this as well so what have we got we've got a 3 litre turbocharged um, it's got about 400 450 horsepower near as damn it um, we've got a dual clutch transmission and effectively what that is it's sort of like an automated manual um, they are generally a little bit more sports car and track focused but the problem that you can have when you have one of these dual clutch transmissions is that it can be a little bit lumpy and not as smooth um, as a normal torque converter automatic at slow speeds but when you get them going and put your foot down a little bit they are really fast and um, really really sharp to be honest um, automatics I prefer driving automatics and I know I've probably mentioned this before but if I didn't have to have a manual um, vehicle for the um, stuff that I do I would probably um, being automatic all the time so we're going to take the same route by the time I get up towards the motorway um, the car's going to be warmed up nicely and we'll be able to open it up a little bit um, this car has got a fair few extras as well and a head-up display and whether that comes with all of them or not I'm not sure um, it's got a fair few um, pieces of carbon on it's got the rear diffuser it's got the side skirts it's got the uh, front lip um, it's got the M performance exhaust as well the full titanium exhaust which sounds really really um, loud and uh, fruity at times I'm just going to see whether people are going to let 
help me out, yes they are. Thank you so much. This is one thing um, I do go on about a fair bit when I'm driving my car, the driving school car that we get um, picked on to a certain extent. Um, that is the case but to a much lesser extent in a car like this. I think different type of people um, will be a little bit, um, a bit arsy if you like towards a car like this when they're on the road um, other than the driving school car but I must admit it's uh, it's a lot easier for example the van is already pulled them back would you get that in driving school car if I was getting around this bin wagon and I'm sat doing 30 miles an hour as well um, would I have got that probably in a driving school car no people would be in a rush to go past but it's as if they know that this thing is quick but I'm not going to drive it any differently I'm still going to drive it in exactly the same way okay with a little bit of fuel a little bit later we've got half a tank i don't think it's uh, going to use half a tank in, in an hour um joking apart it is actually reasonable on fuel if you uh put it in um thirsty mode and you uh drive it accordingly it's going to be down into the low teens for miles per gallon but um i've had this on a motorway journey where it's done 35 miles a gallon so um, for the power that it's got it's um, it's pretty good to be honest even uh, even tax uh, the road tax for it is reasonable as well compared to the the Range Rover that we had beforehand the Range Rover was 500 odd pounds of tax for the year I think this is I can't even remember 140 or something so it's not that bad a little bit more than that so we've got a 40 limit it's not worth making um, loads of progress here we've got a little bit of rain starting um, so we've got to be careful in the wet conditions in the damp conditions in this car it's four-wheel drive sorry it's not four-wheel drive it's only two-wheel drive so all the power's going through the rear wheels and with the power that it's got it's uh, it's quite likely to try and step out and lose grip so you've got to feed the power in lovely and smoothly with performance cars so I'm going to go left onto the motorway what I am going to do I'm just going to change um, one of the settings I've just put um, it in sport mode we've got a little bit of warmth um, it does allow you in this car um, all the rev range when the car's warmed up when it's not warmed it doesn't I'm actually going to put it in manual as well um, and change gears by the paddles. As you can maybe hear there's a little bit different sound. I'm going to dispatch this Sainsbury's. Now, I'm going to do the 
same thing, backing off early for this uh, this limit. Now I didn't break there, and I'm actually doing 57, 58. Um, and I'm going to slow down smoothly after the sign, and that's the problem. I think I said last time with um, slowing down too soon, people generally don't. We've got the, the obligatory um, car zooming past, so be very careful. Try and do things really early um, on some of these slower speed limits. Slow down in a nice smooth manner. I'm doing this one early. There's no one behind, but still causes issues because people are going to be zooming past people don't realize it's not going to get them any further up the road so i'm going to follow the m58 again now the reason why i changed it into manual before when i did the acceleration up the slip road was to manage how i applied the power of this car and this this is what this car is really all about if you um, put your foot down in automatic mode, as we've got at the minute, what happens is it drops gears, okay, for example, and it drops two or three instantly and then suddenly you've got a whole heap of power and in wet conditions, obviously it's, uh, it's not ideal. So what I tend to do when I want to accelerate a little bit more, put it into manual mode, and then I can control the actual acceleration myself. Smooth. There we go, with 63, 64 miles an hour. Handling wise, keep the gas nice and steady. Now, we can't accelerate much because we're already doing 67. So as you can see, the performance cars nowadays, I'm not even trying with this either, to be honest, um, not even trying. Um, the performance cars nowadays are really unusable to their full potential on the roads. So all I tend to do is just sit and cruise in the same way. They do need opening up on occasions, to be honest. They are designed to be driven so if you tootle around in, in any car um, it's not going to do it do it the best if you drove this thing around uh, town all the time without taking it on the open road i'm sure you would have some running issues with it so it does them good to to clean the system and clean them out from uh, from time to time um so i'm doing 68 miles an hour I'm still going to try and make progress today, but if you did watch the other video, how much more progress am I able to make in this compared to my 2 litre diesel? Not much. There is a an added excitement when you're driving this car, but that excitement only lasts momentarily because, like I said, you go from 50 to 70 in the blink of an eye. So, um, I said about in the other video, maybe a, a smaller engine, less powerful car, manual gearbox, a bit more engaging, um, it's probably more fun. The thing about having this extra power is the extra power can get you out of problems also. Um, people don't use the power in the correct way, they only use the power just to accelerate fast or to go fast themselves. Um, if I needed to, if I needed to get it up 10 miles an hour, it would go up in a couple of seconds. So that extra power can be a help to get you out of situations, but most of the time, I'll be honest people, the brake does just the same, but even quicker. So don't think that the acceleration is the only option. The ride quality on these cars, um, this one's not too bad, but um, it is very hard. And I've got it in comfort setting as well. If you put it in uh, Sports Plus, honestly, it's every bump you will feel. So it's not the most comfortable car to actually be in. Um, the drone of the exhaust does my head in, if I was honest. Um, but 
that's also the good part to it. That's the part that um, I actually enjoy. I actually, actually enjoy the, the the downshifts and the upshifts when you're going a little bit more. So I'm glad we've got a little bit of rain. dropping 
the full beams down to dip beams if there's vehicles the other way but this has got an extra trick this car what it actually does is if you've got full beams on it senses where that car is in front and allows the full beams to be used either side of the car and keeps a patch where the car is in front of you on dip beams it's amazing i've not seen that on any other car i'm sure other cars have got it but um i've been well impressed when uh, when i've used that feature of the car so with a higher spec car you get often a lot of the toys there's a there's a, a fairly high spec on this particular m3 so how much of this car's performance have i been able to use um, not much of it to be honest we had a little bit of fun just back there where it dropped it into third went from 35 to 60 within a couple of seconds um, but i haven't been able to use much can't use much now we're coming into Ormskirk again um, i'm just going to pop us back down into automatic mode it will shift down the gears um, for you when it's in manual uh, but it just doesn't shift up so we've got a tractor up ahead may very well be the case that we're able to overtake someone following me behind um, we're doing we're only doing 16 miles an hour so I'm going to look for an overtake I'm just going to give this Audi an opportunity to do it first which it is no one around. We're all good. Actually put it into manual mode rather than automatic, that's why it was um, racing up through the rev range. As you can see, I don't drive it that often. I've been allowed out to play today though people. Okay, posties decided against crossing. We've got some heavier rain now, obviously. Um, so, even more caution. I'm going to take us out of sport mode. No, I'm not going to put us into sport plus. Back to efficient. Um, what does that allow me to do? It allows me um, a smoother power delivery. That's harsh, which is better for these conditions. Also change the severity of the shifts on uh, this car as well. We have a little button here underneath the gear lever, which um, whether you can make out the dashboard just next to where it says D, I can increase the speed of the shifts. So when it's all the way to the top, the shifts are quicker. To, uh, to be having all the toys on. I've touched on it before as well with um, this particular car in different video where if you take your foot off the foot brake the car jumps back into life so it's the best thing to do when you're um, sat at traffic lights handbrake on yes but I tend to sit with my foot on the foot brake um, constantly shifting into neutral um, real need to um, you're always wary of uh, dazzling people okay. so there's a few cars about the performance of this car is utterly irrelevant coming out here you stay there thank you performance of this car is utterly irrelevant in situations like this and I want people to uh, to see is that van just going straight through that now well done for stopping um, people to actually comment on how much of this is usable well, left and roundabout it's clear to the right no problems it's not that sharp with what I'm doing here than what I was doing with uh, with my car. It's as though the road's closed up ahead, so I have to take a little bit of a detour, everyone. Which is all okay. Follow the uh, road up to the roundabout, hook a left and see whether I can get back onto the road that I was, uh, I was on. Jumpiness. 
course of start off can be a little awkward in this car even moving out onto roundabouts you have to anticipate when your gap is coming and be really slowly on the gas or the accelerator before your gap arrives so it gives the actual dual clutch transmission a chance to get going it will work quickly but again they're risking losing traction especially in weather like this as well so yeah have to apply every single action of your accelerate, accelerator smoothly, it has to be done smoothly. towards Formby so I'm not going to do the exact same route um, just going to have a little look at um, again, some out of town roads not much more to say though everyone um, well, car's a car at the end of the day um, and I'm not saying much because we're talking about making progress and making progress as much as I can but said the performance of this car just is made irrelevant with the conditions first of all and then and the roads might be able to do a little more on these roads coming up I'm just going to turn right let the car change gear itself oncoming traffic there is a SUV or a soft roader coming. What I was saying about the roundabout, you have to be on it very slowly to then go in. As you can see, it's quite lurchy there because I used a little bit more. So you have to be mindful of that when you're driving um, transmission in this car. So yeah, there's a fair bit of rain come down. Um, I don't know where to put my glasses, that's why they're still on top of my head. So I'm going to have to be very careful um, in these weather conditions there's no in the world that I would ever turn traction control off in this car even if weather conditions were exceptional um, might do if it was round a track been luckily enough um, if not the competition model but uh, I did a track day in an M4 same car but just the, uh, the two door rather than the four door um, knowing the world I'd be taking traction control off so got a little bit of a faster road we've got a van up ahead parked um, so I'm doing past 30 for now but I'm still not um, yeah, just had to be careful of the van thank you very much buddy okay um, back down into manual I'm going to control it into sports mode so I can do the uh, the application of the power to how I like if I can use more and I will use more like, like, can use more and I will use more do it safely Put the air conditioning on a second Put the air conditioning on a second don't know how to work the car Certain that I do all my braking coming 
into this quarter beforehand. Again, just dropping the gear. We've got a problem with bed of the white car parked. So again, slowing a bit more, dropping another gear. Cyclists from issue, dropping into third, and just making sure there's no issues with anyone. In third gear, doing 35. Higher gear is going to be a benefit because you don't want all the extra power. And that's why you always drive to the distance you see is clear. Who would have known that that was round the corner? You imagine if it had been absolutely tonking in that situation. Wet conditions, jumping on the brakes, no good. Or if a cyclist comes the other way as well. Okay, slowing, slowing gear for the corner. Feathering the gas and smooth out, smooth out. There's a little bit of traction issues coming out of the corner. That's what I mean. We've got to be so, so careful with how we deal with these machines nowadays. A couple of gears down for the corner. You probably hear the exhaust grumbling as we downshift. Okay, so we're coming on to a 50 limit. The higher speed of the cars in second mindful of how much acceleration on the way out and I am going to turn right so I'm going to tell this nice and early oncoming car again I'm just going to wait making certain that I didn't confuse the Mitsubishi coming out I moved early okay so Again, it's going to be pretty irrelevant. We've got the, uh, the lorry up ahead. I'm just going to put us back into manual mode. Can't do a thing for now. I do know this section of road. Um, our fun has been spoiled for a little bit, and I get fun from the sounds this car as well and fun from using it properly and being um, irrespectful of it as well um, you have to be respectful of these powerful performance cars nowadays you can't just tonk it everywhere like you you would do your, your one litre fiesta um, even one litre fiestas now nowadays are, are pretty shifty so um, cars have moved on so much. I'm actually going to look to do an overtake of this um, lorry at some point as well. I'm going to try and look to do it at a safe time. There is a, um, a bend in the road a little touch further up, and luckily enough, um, we do have the ability to um, dispatch this lorry really quickly. Um, it's a right bend and then a left bend and the section is long enough for me to get past and I'm looking across already and seeing there's no one coming which depends on how this lorry deals with this junction I am thank you buddy very kind of you saw me coming and heard me coming and drove accordingly perfect allows us to get on with things a little bit more bend over the top of the bridge can't see making sure I'm doing all my slowing beforehand choosing fourth gear rather than third a higher gear in these wet conditions um, is definitely the best choice dropping it into, into second with all that power and all that torque and risking lighting up the rear wheels. Um, we're in fourth, we're at oh, 1200 revs, we're doing um, 28 miles an hour. I am going to put my foot to the floor and this is how quickly it accelerates. A little bit of wheel spin, the F60 and that's from fourth gear. So you can see the performance is unbelievable. And that's another reason why you always drive to that limit point. You'll always be able to stop in that distance you see is clean. We've had a couple of lovely examples. 
dropping into third and slowing a little bit. Um, again, I'm going to go into fourth. There's plenty of acceleration. Straight part of road. We do have a cyclist down at the very end. Just taking a little bit of caution because we've got a cyclist on the off side of the road and we've got one near side that's just around the corner as well. No problems with this guy to the right. Slowing. Down a couple of gears for the corner, balancing the car as I go around. We've got a, a group of cyclists, so I don't want to scare them as well, but I'm going to try and warn them uh, that I'm coming. Can't see well enough to offside round that corner. I'm staying wide. can be brutal um, just remember if you ever get in a performance car just apply things smoothly um, they're only as fast as you use them and it's quite comfortable at 30 miles an hour and just cruising speed but as you can see you do have that performance to uh, to go and have a little bit of fun if needed this one's turning there's no one coming so the micro should have a clear route through. I'm just going to drop the gear back into manual. Not going to risk anything on corners on this weather. Moving from the best view, no one overtaking me. But a lorry, I'm already at 40 so I'm not going to go until I'm past the signs. No one's coming the other way so I'm going to take a position off side of the line best view and then cut back to the near side to lessen the sharpness of the corner. So technique only can be done when you can see way into the dis distance. Okay we're coming back down into form we so back into manual again. Job I did with limited space so appreciate when you do have built up areas you're obviously going to have more problems finished with our acceleration and our speed just yet everyone we do have a dual carriageway further up which eventually takes us to the m57 motorway and that's going to be the route that we're going to be using to go back in slightly longer i'm suspecting our route today compared to last time no signal no one about no one needing i'm going to turn left Just um, show everyone Sport Plus. So this is as quick as it goes. Not going to go as quick as it go as it goes, but as you can see, loss of traction straight away, and that again was a smooth, progressive way of um, applying that gas. And even there, it breaks traction. Pretty good tyres on this, but they are a little bit biased towards dry, warm weather. Um, when they're needing a change, we're going to go for a slightly different model. We're going to have a go at this roundabout. Um, 
sport mode. We've got a police car a bit further up. We want to see if we can uh, do some acceleration a bit further up. So building smoothly and progressively. 60 miles an hour. That's it. So not much of the usable performance has been there. Uh, Today and it's going to be the case all the way through. You know, these cars, people aspire to them. And why have I got this car? Brutally honest, it was my missus's choice. Went in to buy a driving school car, and um, we were in the BMW dealership. We had one of these um, sat in the used cars section. My missus went, Oh, I like that. We ended up not buying that particular one, but um, finding one that we actually wanted. And I bought this from uh, a company called SRK, Scott and Chris, uh, down in Milton Keynes. Um, what a good car dealership. Um, the preparation that they uh, they they do for their for their buyers and their used cars is immense. I, I've not known a dealership like it. So check them out. They do leases as well honestly you won't go far wrong if you go to SRK for whether it be one of their used cars or one of their uh, one of the new ones top guys so we bought this um, because my missus liked it we've just gone past them one in the same colour as well wicked um, I'm just gonna drop into manual just in case I need a little bit more power um, dispatch this lorry, I'm not going to bother, there's no issue, but the reason behind that again is that if I want full acceleration in that fourth gear I can have it, whereas if I was in automatic mode and I put the foot straight to the floor or even smoothly to the floor, it's going to drop loads of gears and dump loads of power, so you can see the mindset behind using this car and why I flip between manual and automatic quite a lot. So, um, car isn't often driven um, more than the shop and run. It's used for the shop and run. Um, we went for the M3 because of the practicality. I know the M4 still got a, a brilliantly sized boot, but um, there's still occasions where we'll uh, we'll go out with more than just me and my missus in the car. So we went for the. Um, the Ford or the M3 rather than the M4. Um, I always preferred them as well to be honest. I know the M4 can maybe look a little bit um, more sporty for me. It doesn't. Um, the, the extra wide stance of the, um, the M3 I think it suits the Ford door. Let us know what you think in the comments. Um, what's your thoughts on the colour as well? Uh, Secure orange. It's something that to go off and uh, find this one. The progress, as you can see, I'm not hurrying the lorry up in front of me. It probably wouldn't do anything anyway. Um, There's just no point. The distance is all important. Keeping the space actually allows me to make a little bit more progress a little bit further up if the opportunity came. Where we are with it, the 
yeah. Yep. Position myself in a space. No bothers. So notice where I did that pass. I did that pass on a straight part crossing could change. Be careful, Ashley. Um, yeah, I did that pass on the straight part when the lorry was uh, not going to be a big deal. I didn't want to um, start going past the, the lorry before I knew the position that the lorry was going to take. So, plan overtakes. Plan how you're going to get past people. But all I would say is, where's it got me? It hasn't got me far. All I'm really doing this for, I probably would have stuck behind the lorry normally myself gonna get me any further up the road but what I am trying to demonstrate with doing that is if you're gonna do it how you do it safely no problem up ahead about using all of the road space there's two lanes up ahead um, lights are on green at the minute Staying in lane two, just in case the lights change. Got less issues with the van. Checkers have come through. Lights are obviously fine. No reason to indicate in these situations. Change your speed to suit. So moving into lane two in that scenario, I wasn't ever going to be looking to overtake the van in front. All I was doing it for was for a better view. Less risk. No one was uh, behind me ever going to cause problems. What's your favourite car? What's your dream car that you would buy? you a BMW fan? Are you a Mercedes fan? Are you an Audi fan? Like the three sort of like um, aspirable makes that people often go towards. There are other things out there that obviously can give you um, it's a bang for your buck as well. So um, let us know what your choice is in the comments. Um, let us know how you drive your sort of like performance car or even um, warm hatch or hot hatch you drive. You do a few of those things that I've mentioned. Um, notice I'm not plumbed into got to get past, got to get past. Not. Um, although I'm going to try and a little bit more acceleration coming up onto the motorway a little touch further up. I'm using uh, lane three to go ahead, three lanes go on the motorway. This is a particularly poor junction. Um, this lane is totally fine going onto the motorway but you have to be very 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 careful when you're on these um, multi-lane junctions people don't stay in the lane properly so I'm thinking these three to my left are going to be um, potentially coming across into my lane three to, to go onto the motorway especially with the lorry to the left they're going to be wary of that and they're maybe going to be pushing so again I'm just going to use manual mode I'm just going to try and position myself just in here behind the white one but now I've been curtailed a little bit by the van I'm in lane three staying in lane three and I can go into lane three here in the van um, doesn't know what's going on you're all right buddy where are you going now that's fine no problem buddy some progress um, to make any one of those things you just remember if people are unsure of where they're going just give them room give them time give them space am i even catching the one on the left no. so drop into the left lane and chill so I've been able to show little bits of what this car is capable of and what it can do. Um, hopefully you've been able to feel, not feel, hear.
hear and uh, and witness even the loss of little bits of traction when I've accelerated um, briskly. It, not, it hasn't been straight to the floor. Hopefully you've been able to witness loss of traction in a couple of situations. All the systems have still been on, the traction control's been on and it sorts those things out really easily um, and keeps you in check. So the systems nowadays are brilliant. The reason why I'm going on to talk about this is because if you aren't used to driving something that's classed as a performance car, you get straight into it. Please, please, please do not just floor it. Um, you'll end up in the tree. Um, I remember an old work colleague of mine um, lent someone uh, their car, never drove it before, it was a Porsche, and ended up being wrapped around a tree. Um, that's the accident. So, if people aren't used to driving these things, build your experience with them. Um, this thing still scares me. It really does. Um, I've driven some cars in my time. I've driven Ferraris, Aston Martins. Uh, my mum used to have a 911 Porsche. Um, honestly, this thing eats it. It's the lariest, quickest thing that I've ever driven. And it's a four-door saloon car. So, we can buy things nowadays and things are getting even quicker with the electric cars as well, wow. Um, we can buy things nowadays that can do 0 to 100 in less than 8 seconds. And there's so much power available, people don't use power responsibly, they really don't. So, all I ask if you ever get in a car like this is that you need my advice about using things smoothly. Um, back into manual mode, just so I can apply the power. Um, I'm gonna early upshift into second. And then I can use the power that I need to suit. Slide us back across into the left lane. Again, higher gear, don't want loads of engine revs. Reapplying the signal for people coming onto the roundabout and then it's smooth but I'm doing 35 36 so again the M3 is irrelevant um, I hope that's been a good insight into driving things with more power and the responsibility that you have to still do things in the correct safe way you are not invincible um, just as we're talking about that police car comes through um, the lights and that's what you've got to be ready for we've had a few incidents today and situations where if I'd have been tonking it we may have uh, had different problems so you've got a responsibility to yourself and other road users um, not like our taxi friend up ahead jumping red lights absolutely idiotic so safety on the roads you can still have fun there's no reason why you can't have a car with some more performance but just please take the advice that I tried to put across today I hope that's been useful hope everyone's keeping safe and taking care and I hope to see you all soon